G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. As you can probably tell, today we are going to be checking out the ultra durable F5C. The F5C is a premium 10.3 plane and has just come to the PlayStation Store. For those of us on PC, it's been available for a while now and because I didn't put the pre-order in, I don't get the MiG-28 camo, but this plane, regardless, MiG-28 camo or not, is uh, kind of crazy. It's crazy for a different reason. It's not one of those planes that is going to be the ultimate dogfighter or the ultimate missile machine. Of course you do have great dogfighting capabilities and in fact you have more flares than you do with the F5E. However, this plane really shines because it has a combination of low battle rating and excellent performance. It has performance that is somewhat similar to the F5E, uh, albeit with I believe a bit less engine power, um, but this plane is still absolutely insane. It's one of those planes that is very easy to fly and whilst it doesn't have great missiles, can be used to great effect if you know what you're doing. And that is the caveat. If you guys are looking to purchase this plane, you can do so. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop you, but I will advise that if you don't have a jet, this plane is not good for you. Planes that are really high tier like this, that face top tier matchmaking, uh, do exactly that. They face planes that are extremely capable. And because you don't have any of the tools to deal with these things, except for flares, but more importantly, you might not have the know-how to deal with these types of things. You are going to struggle in a plane like this. However, if you do have some experience, for example, say you have the MiG-21 uh, SMT, or you have the MiG-21 MF, uh, or one of the F-104s, or you know something in another tech tree that's not the US, and you were looking to grind the American tech tree, then by all means, this plane is pretty damn good. But for those of you that don't have much experience, this plane is going to be a little bit difficult because despite it being slightly idiot proof like you may have seen in the beginning of the match, uh, sorry in the beginning of the video, it's not exactly a plane that is easy to fly in the top tier meta. It doesn't have good missiles and its speed it leaves something to be desired. On top of that you don't have any avionics. When I say avionics I'm specifically referring to radar, RWR and of course um, I count flares as sort of in that avionics section because it's kind of like utility that you have to uh, spend. Now MiG-23 sends me a missile but of course a single turn will throw that off quite quickly and we're going to look at this FGR-2 here. The FGR-2 is probably going to be a bit of a threat with the pulse doppler radar but have a look at the spotting system. It's, it's still be a bit of a nasty. These planes are popping up at like two three kilometers. Uh, a couple of them are being proxy spotted and I don't know. I feel pretty uh, pretty strongly about the spotting system as you probably already know. Um, this Mirage here pops in at about 5 kilometers, which is about right but closes the distance very very quickly and so gives me little time to engage him. However the FGR2 has done, done, done a bit of a funny maneuver and I'm able to get some shots off onto him. The FGR2 however has built up plenty of speed and is therefore able to basically jet away quite quickly. MiG-21 BIS basically comes out of nowhere and uh, Thank you, thank, thankfully, I'm keeping my head on a swivel, but uh, like like I said earlier, I do believe that this distance should be a little bit extended. Of course, I'm willing to have a discussion with anyone in the comment section below about that. Now, we're in a dogfight here with the MiG-21 BIS. Now, the MiG-21 BIS is better in a vertical dogfight, but we're in a sort of horizontal dogfight at this point, which is F-5C territory. Not only that, we have Closey here, who's uh, one of my mods, I believe. Um, he's definitely on my Discord server and is a pretty pretty, pretty decent chap. Uh, he is baiting for me, which is very, very wonderful. So we're going to have a nice kill with an AIM-9E here because we have a teammate baiting for us. And once the teammates bait, you do get a lot of easy kills. And that's when I would r r rather... Yeah, stuttering a bit. That's when I would rather use my missiles, when someone is heavily distracted and not moving very quickly. AIM-9Es are not your killing machines at top tier. They, at most, will spend some flares, but what you should be using them for in the ideal situation is for enemies that are heavily distracted. And I'm thinking here this MiG-21 might be one of those candidates, but the F5 is the one at the back of the stack. And so I'm gonna go for him, go for a quick head on, no shots fired, no dice there, and then switch my attention to the MiG-21. The F5C is one of those planes that is really, really good in a dogfight and in situations that are really close range and really low speed. Well, not, not critically low speed, but sort of like sub-1000. You can really make a mark in those types of situations, especially with planes that like to bleed a lot of speed, sort of high AOA fighters like the MiG-21s. You can really make a wreck out of these planes. And similarly to the F5E, you basically have 
getting your way with just about every plane in the matchmaker, provided that you don't end up sort of getting missiled. Now, the MiG-21 MF here is definitely struggling. Have a look at that angle that he's pulling. He's very, very sharp banks, and uh, unfortunately that's going to get him killed because it puts him right in front of me, giving him uh, a little bit of a hole in his right wing. So, we're going to continue forward, and another MiG-21 disc comes RKO out of nowhere, minus the RKO, of course, and he, uh, I don't know, I guess you could call that a kind of RKO. He's uh, come around, and he's damaged one of my engines. Now, normally an engine this damaged is a death sentence for any jet, but not the F5C, because it is almost idiot-proof. This plane is very, very durable for some god-known reason. Uh, and basically, what I want to do is try and run this guy down, but... I don't have anything. I don't have the speed. I don't have the acceleration. But I tell you what, I do have an F5E on my team, and he is going to be helping me out there. And um, maybe we can get some kills with the uh, head-ons head and guns. Now this F4F looks really distracted. Looks like he's going for closey, and then he picks me as a target as a last-minute head-on. That, my my dear friends, good old War Thunder enjoyers, is uh, small PP energy. You don't do last minute head-ons because it's very risky and you will risk your plane. Now, this FGR2 decides that uh, last minute head-ons are not his cup of tea and he uh, is kind of wise about it, although a little bit slow. So, we're looking here at a couple of situations. I'm low on speed because I have basically one and a half engines. The F4F looks like he's going to go for a head-on, or is he? And uh, it looks like he's not really going to. So I'm going to go and pull in towards him, and the F5 he manages to get the kill there. So I have a MiG-21 BIS to deal with and an FGR-2. I'm going to circle back to the MiG-21 BIS, and hopefully the FGR-2 comes in and I can get a head-on, because at that point, this is kind of all I can muster, because the engine is so damn damaged. But you're still able to get this thing back to base very, very easily, even on one engine, as you'll probably see a little bit later on in the video. Closey sends a missile out, and unfortunately it hits the F5 instead of the uh, MiG-21, resulting in a pretty nasty fireball. A late head-on there from the Phantom and myself results in the Phantom being a little bit worse for wear. Uh, of course, that was all on the Phantom and a little bit on me. Again, the small PP energy coming straight through. Don't take these head-ons because they are just too damn risky. Speaking of risky, I've decided to turn and burn a fair bit of my speed, but because what I'm going to do is uh, kind of desperate and I'm fairly damaged, I think I can pull off myself a, uh, a little bit of a nice kill here, but the FGR2 looks like he's really struggling to keep up, tries to pull away from me, and unfortunately for him, lands in the river, giving me a nice little kill. So, we have ourselves a pretty intense match and this is the situation that the F4 or the F5s really shine in. These sort of knife fights where you're not on 1v1s, you're sort of in 2v2s, 3v3s uh, and it's really taking the hurt to planes that have high AOA, things like the MiG-21s and the F4F which has the wing slats so you can turn a lot but of course you do bleed a lot of speed very quickly. Now Moving on to our next set of dogfights here, we have the uh, MiG-23 ahead of us, there's no way you're going to get a missile, and he's just travelling too rapidly to track laterally, as in across the screen. You're not going to be getting any kills that way, unless of course you slot in behind him, and that's exactly what I've done. I'm going to fire off a missile, and unfortunately for me, the MiG-23 is just a little bit either lucky or on the ball, and I'm on the ball enough to notice a J7E coming in behind. Now, I don't want to bleed all of my speed because I know I'm in the middle of a dogfight with uh, a bunch of other planes, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it into the vertical a little bit, bleed a little bit of that speed, and allow the J7 to continue his aggressive maneuvers, but of course he's going to overshoot because he's got a little bit more energy retention than me, uh, sorry, in, in a vertical that is, and I'm, uh, look at that, just able to slot around, I'm at that speed where turning is a bit of a breeze, and uh, not quite enough for a missile, so what I'm going to do, bide my time, try and catch him, but it's really not happening, and the J7 is paying attention, maybe, yes, no, no. Unfortunately, no kill for me, and uh, I get myself a one less missile. But it's okay, because I have a dogfight of uh, lots of enemies that are distracted, and so I have to take that into consideration. Let's make the most of it. And this is where, like I said, the F5C shines. So, MiG-23, quick shot on him. That's pretty much cunts fucked, and so I'm going to nose over, 
get some speed, make sure that I'm not on the receiving end of an A9J, that F5A is coming in nice and close, and the J7E is closing the distance as well. The F5E doesn't give me anything, and the J7 gets oofed pretty damn hard, so I'm looking to turn my attention now to the F5. Unfortunately, I turned the wrong way, but I am going to put myself in a position where the MiG-23 has come in. I'm going to go for a quick head-on here, pull away at about 1.1-ish, 1 1.3, and then try and get him to commit to a turn by not turning as much. Of course, I'm also keeping speed this way, and whilst you do want to be turning in a dogfight, keeping your speed always gives you a little bit more of an edge wherever you can. The F4F here, who is a Nigel boy, is a little bit distracted by some enemies, and so I'm able to get a critical hit there with a fire. The F5A flies underneath me, and so I'm going to cut off to the right and try and slot in behind him. And of course, the MiG-23M is in a situation where he does not have much speed left. So, F5A is looking very, very much like a snacko. He's uh, turning around and he's going for my squad mate there, or my auto squad mate. I managed to get the MiG-23, and of course, the F5A crashes into the ground after being damaged. This is the kind of stuff that the F5C really excels in. It is an absolute monster in a furball. Although you have to have your situational awareness, you do have things like flares that allow you to exceed in a situation where you would otherwise not. Things like MiG-21s would fall apart in a situation like this. They would just lose too much speed. And whilst you can have the potential to lose too much speed in the F5s, you don't really get that so often. Simply because you shouldn't be turning to the point where you're dropping to 500 kilometers an hour. You should be at, say, 600 plus. That would be my, my uh, ideal advice. Now, let's have a look at best case scenario. This thing is a 10.3, so it goes all the way down to 9.3, giving you some pretty spicy matches. Now, you will face things like the A5. Uh, I think the A4 is 8.7, so this guy must be in a funny squad, like a, like a fail squad or something, but you will face things like Hunter FGA9s and uh, Harriers. So, the Hunter, isn't really a problem here. You can basically outrun it, you can outdo it in uh, just about every way, except maybe energy retention in a turn. I'm, I'm not quite sure on that one. Someone let me know in the comments. So we have an F100, and the F100 has a bit of AOA, so they are able to clean up, or to sort of latch onto us a little bit. But of course, I'm not really interested in the F100. I'm gonna continue straight. This thing has plenty of speed for a full down tier. And so I can kind of just zoom around the map and pick off slow kills. Kind of the same way you would in the Hunter. So I'm basically just going to look at my targets, look at my situation and gather a little bit of uh, information. Now, the Harrier is closing the distance. I don't know if it's a GR1, but I do have flares. And the F104 is probably an F104A or at most an F104G or J. And of course, a couple of flares and one simple bank gives me the opportunity to avoid the F-104A and the SRAM at the same time. The Harrier is looking like he's going to be a bit more aggressive, and so I'm going to go into the vertical, making sure that F-104A is not going to come back anytime soon. Uh, but he kind of is, is he? Maybe? Well, let's fire, fire and aim at 9E and have a look. So, fire and forget. Of course, we're going to have uh, no connection, of course, because life sucks. But that's okay, because we have the Harrier to deal with. Now the Harrier is in a bad situation, he's been in a little bit of dogfighting and uh, it's it's not looking great for him, he's, he's double damage now and I'm just going to finish him off with guns while the AIM uh, 9Es take their sweet sweet time. Of course another Harrier joins the fray and so I uh, get distracted, need to switch to the missile again, so you know what, screw it, you can have an AIM 9E and um, lovely, what a nice little kill. So AV8A, beautiful bait there by me with that uh, enemy Harrier. He's uh, very distracted and getting distracted kills is again your go-to with the AIM-9Es. The uh, F-86 here looking like a snack as well. Beautiful head-on kill just mwah, molto bene and uh, pulling off at the last minute or pulling off well ahead of the enemy's bullets is your key for a head-on. You don't want to be leaving it to the last minute because you will risk damaging your airplane and of course if you do get some critical damage to the edges of your wing you're going to struggle in future dogfights so you need to consider what you're planning for in the future not like way way down the line but like in the next five minutes and consider is it really worth wasting your plane is it really worth all of that damage and at that point that is when you weigh up whether you full commit course I would advise against full committing at all costs but sometimes it becomes a necessary evil so 
moving swiftly on. We have the F104, I believe that's the same one from before, barreling towards us very, very quickly. A couple of quick bursts there from the 20 mils and another sweet, sweet head-on kill. This thing has a knack for head-ons. It's got the same 20 mils as I believe the F100 uh, and it's pretty damn sweet. These guns are fantastic. You have plenty of ammo, but you can't be too liberal. I would be a little bit on the conservative side uh, in terms of the ammunition sort of uh, spending. But of course, if you're sitting behind something like a Hunter and you just need to get a kill, you do have the opportunity to spray and pray. However, I am down to 40 odd rounds of ammunition. Uh, not very pretty, but of course, if you conserve your ammunition enough and you're good enough with your shots, you can wear down your opponents to the point where you get stuff like that really easy kills. This plane is almost idiot proof and so if you know what you're doing at top tier even remotely you can absolutely excel in this plane. Like I said though I wouldn't buy it if you've never played top tier before just because most people who are at that level are less likely to have a solid understanding of the battle rating and of the mechanics and of the game itself and so I would advise against buying this thing if you are inexperienced. However if this isn't your first rodeo then by all means Grab the F5C, enjoy away, and of course, uh, enjoy, if you're on PlayStation, enjoy that sweet MiG-28 camo. I'm a little bit jealous, but at the same time, it's uh, something you could probably find on the live.warthunder. That's uh, something that the PlayStation players don't get, unfortunately. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, until then, next time, take care, and I'll catch you next time.